Okay, welcome to uh, part three of the Ninja Outbreak commentary. Uh, we just got to the uh, middle area, this hub area, and are now going to follow this mysteriously opening door uh, to the West Hall. So first things first, in this area, um, we are introduced to the Messenger Ninja. So one thing I wanted to do with this game is have enemy behavior a bit more complicated than just following the player around and attacking them. Um, and so I had a few enemies that would interact with the environment in various ways. In the first area, we saw the saboteur who would, you know, press buttons to open up those cages to release animals out that could attack you. And here we have the messengers, which will alert ninja, other ninja in the area to your presence. So another risk reward thing of if you see one of those, you want to probably want to take it out right away um, or else it will alert its compatriots. And there are some areas where that could involve um, triggering a, like a silver ninja or something particularly dangerous that uh, normally the player wouldn't have to run into. Um, you'll see that in, wep in one of the weapons labs. For one, uh, that's the main time that happens. And it happens a few times in other places as well. But uh, the other one of those enemies that uh, interacts with the environment, we'll see later. Um, it's a uh, ninja that can consume food and clone itself, which will only exist in one area of the game, and we'll see that later on. Uh, for now, I'll save here. Uh, so one thing that uh, I did was, uh, again, we have these uh, security doors which are monitored by uh, these the uh, these uh, security cameras. The idea being that Dr. Yefimovich, who we'll run into later on, uh, who we saw on the security camera, uh, will is monitoring you and opening these doors. Uh, for you, um, but not opening them if there's if you're being stalked by ninjas to avoid uh, letting those ninjas uh, get around areas that he doesn't want them. So here we have another area, uh, you know, network of hallways. Uh, um, here uh, there's another um, messenger ninja up there. You really don't want to let him get loose because there are some tough enemies in here that you could completely avoid uh, if you don't uh, set him off and uh, let him alert them to your presence. So here is another one where there's a shortcut. Uh, for this time around, I'm actually not going to use a shortcut just so I can actually see more of this level and show it off in the commentary. Uh, there's a lot of ways through here, uh, especially if you're using that shortcut. There's some side areas that have like here, which have more ammo. Uh, there's these uh, red ninja, which are stalkers. Uh, their main deal, um, they will stalk you at a further distance, so they're harder to you know, see, harder to hit um, when they're in stalking mode. Uh, they will throw smoke bombs and then uh, sort of go in for a sword attack within the smoke, so they are particularly dangerous because of that. Um, so they're, they're an interesting enemy, uh, you know, just to deal with. Uh, I forgot I can't shoot over that. Um, oh, so it's kind of, you want to deal with them when they jump in, um, for that attack. And that's the other thing about them, is they can return to stalking mode after they've been triggered for an attack. So you know, no, you'll you notice then that it, they were in attack phase, but then the sound cut back out because they went into stalking mode. And the other thing to note is that there are only a couple of those in this area, so that you can't really take advantage of the inverse ninja law until uh, later in the level when you've triggered the messenger ninja, but even that doesn't lead to a lot of opportunities for that. Okay, I gotta be very careful right now because um, I'm at very low health. 
Okay, and I'm good. So I'm going to take this guy out very quickly, um, and I will show you why in a sec. Let's see, can I see it from over here? Okay, not very well, but past this rubble in that room over there uh, is the fur is the uh, machine gun which you can only get if you backtrack to this area once you've gotten the rocket launcher so you can clear away this rubble. But uh, messenger ninjas can pass through rubble and they can trigger the silver combat ninja who is guarding the machine gun. So you could end up fighting that guy this early on in the game if you let that messenger ninja get away, which would basically be fairly unpleasant, um, especially this early in the game, but for the most part at any time in the game, because uh, they are fairly tough. Um, you can get through pretty much the entire game without fighting one, but there are some side areas and, you know, bonus stuff that you can get by fighting a few of them. But for the most part, they're there to be avoided. So, uh, I am pretty good with keys right now. I've got one of each type. And I'm going to take my purple key and open the rest door and meet Dr. Yefimovich. And there's a couple more keys in here. Um, most of the keys in the game, uh, I have a specific, or not specific, but general idea of what they're going to be used for. So in other words, you know, in an, in an area with two green doors, I'll put one green key in there so that the player will have to choose which of those green doors are open. Of course, they could choose to open neither of them and save that green key for a different area, but I am I'm I have those doors in mind for that key in a general sense. But I wanted to have a couple keys that I had nothing particular in mind for, to just to add to that uh, idea of the player being able to spend the keys however they want and wherever they want. So this gives them a bit of wiggle room. So there is one green key and one red key. Uh, there is actually a way later on in the game uh, to uh, bypass a purple door so that they have an extra purple key to uh, tool around with and potentially skip a... Uh, a progress a section that would normally be required for progress so i'm going to save here and talk to uh yefimovich uh he explains what's going on um this is in an interesting conversation in that this is basically the only major conversation in the game other than at the beginning and at the very end so uh there's a lot of information i wanted to impart in this conversation um about what your objectives are uh what you are able to do in the game uh, what you should be doing and what you ultimately need to be doing. So, the main bits of information that I need to get in here are uh, the victory condition for the game, the way to you know, beat the game is to go to the North Lab um, and fight the Master Ninja. And the other bit of information about that I need to get in there is that uh, once you enter the North Lab, uh, you can't go back. So, if you enter the North Lab... Um, you, there's no checkpoints in there, uh, so you have to try to go through the whole thing and beat the boss. If you don't, you go back to your last checkpoint before, <coughs> sorry, too much talking, drink some tea there, uh, before the, uh, North Lab, and, uh, then... Uh, you know, you'll have to either try it again, try the whole thing again, or get more prepared uh, before taking it on. <laughs> so, how you get more prepared, that's the other bit of information that I need to impart. There are four ninja hearts in the game, which uh, basically, um, they invoke the inverse ninja rule by adding to the count of ninjas in the area. Um, so... If you have two ninja hearts and you're fighting one ninja, it'll be powered as if there were three ninjas in the room. So you're basically weakening the ninjas by amplifying the, the ninja fields by uh, carrying these hearts. This also applies to the final boss, so the final boss becomes easier in terms of its health the more ninja hearts you have. Um, the other thing 
the other bit of information is that there are two weapons that are in the area. He doesn't tell you what they are specifically, but he does tell you that you will need some items to clear away the rubble and power up the doors that don't have any power that are both in the southern lab and in the north lab. Um, so that's another thing is the north lab is accessible from this point in the game. Yefim Once you talk to Yefimovich, all of the lockdown doors are opened. You can go to the North Lab. But the North Lab, there is a straight shot through the North Lab, which if you have the rocket launcher and the lightning gun, you can go straight through. This is the same path that John Dagger would take in Venusian Vengeance, and it is the easiest path through the level. But if you don't have those two items, you can still go to the North Lab and you can still reach the final boss. It's just that you have to go through a fairly labyrinthine set of side paths in order to bypass the rubble and the unpowered doors in order to get there. And again, you have to make it all in one shot. There's no checkpoints. And if you die, you go back to before the North Lab. So again, it's a player choice. One of the main things I wanted to do in this game is make it about the player putting themselves into dangerous situations, exploring unknown areas of this lab, um, dealing with whatever enemies they might run into, and deciding what is worth it um, for them before taking on the final lab. So all the hearts, all the, all the extra weapons are completely optional. Uh, the player does not need to pick them up. They could brave the North Lab on their own uh, without that and potentially win the game uh, early on. Uh, so here we have, so that's the main information I needed to impart with this conversation. Uh, but I also, uh, so here's where you find out about the inverse ninja law, which is another bit of information because that explains also how the ninja hearts work. Um, I... Also, uh, you can ask Yefimovich about any of the ninjas you've r run into, and he will tell you a little about how they work mechanically. Uh, so, this again tells you about the North Lab, how you can prepare. Um, and this tells you where to start your search. Uh, there is a bit of information in the old Super Soldier Lab, which uh, gives you uh, information on the location of the other ninja hearts, um, the, and is the only, that is the only location containing a ninja heart that is accessible at this point, because the other areas are blocked by either rubble or unpowered doors. So while you can go to the north lab right away, um, in order to get all the ninja hearts, you do need to get the other weapons, so there is a bit of a metroidvania, um, component to this game in terms of that. Although it's not tied to actual progression, it's tied to getting the extra items that can help you to uh, beat the game. So this explains how the North Lab works. Uh, here you can ask about the ninjas. So this is a list of all the ninjas you've seen so far in the game. Any ninjas that you haven't run into, you can't ask about. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these. Um, one thing I will do is uh, there is a, a Godfrey Ho reference in here. Uh, the first Godfrey Ho movie I ever watched in its entirety was Thunder Ninja Kids in the Golden Adventure, uh, which is a, a quite a fun movie, actually. Uh, if I had, there are some Godfrey Ho movies where if I had watched them first, I probably wouldn't have quite uh, gotten so enamored with with his movies as I had. But this movie, I, I basically it was free on YouTube. I put it on expecting to, you know turn it off when it became so uh, you know I, I, I like bad movies you know you, you've probably figured this out but there's some that are just so bad that you, you can't really sit through them and I was expecting this to be that because uh, you know the title was so similar to uh, Space Thunder Kids which was by the same production company uh, it was a Joseph Lai production who produced Godfrey Ho's movies early on in his career um, and is just a, I, I haven't seen it, but I, I'd, I'd heard stories about how unwatchable it is. It's a basically spliced together a bunch of Korean anime 
um, into something that was very slow and unwatchable. So I was expecting something of that caliber, and I was I was surprised to find it was a very entertainingly bad movie. Uh, a lot of wacky stuff going on. Um, just a really fun movie. A lot of quotable lines, which I do quote in this uh, game. Um, and one of them is here. Okay, let's hear it. We have a priceless antique statue which has been stolen by the Black Ninja. Black Ninja? What do they look like? Hmm. They're all black. Oh, sounds like Black Ninja to me. What I impart here, Black Ninja, what are they like? They were all black. Sounds like Black Ninja, which is uh, what the person then responds to him saying, oh, they're all black. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's my bit of my self-indulgent um, Godfrey Ho reference in there. So now that we've gotten that conversation out of the way, the game world opens up quite a bit. Uh, you can now reach uh, the two weapons labs. You can reach the. You can go down further to the dormitories and to the mess hole, and you can go up further to the uh, infirmary to the old super soldier lab and to the uh, north lab if you want to try to take a run at the end of the game. Uh, so I'm going to cut it off here and next time around I'm going to head up to the old uh, super soldier lab and uh, get that first ninja heart, get a map, and get the location of the other ninja hearts. So uh, that is the end for this part. See you next time.